Hey, welcome back everyone. This is Ian bringing you the third video in this AI series with the new Boston. In this video, we're going to build upon what we created in the first two videos where we interacted with the GPT 3.5 Turbo using OpenAI's Chat Completion API. In the first video, we just asked a question, we hard coded it, and we got back an answer. In the second video, we actually got dynamic input from our user whenever we ran our program, and then we used that to ask a question of the model, and we got back an answer again. This time, we are going to continue on that, but we're going to have a back and forth continuous conversation with the model. So let's go ahead and get into the code. On the first couple lines, of course, we have our boilerplate importing whatever packages we need and setting our API key on that OpenAI library. Now, we have an example of some potential inputs that we can provide here in this multi-line comment. So we, me being Ian, uh, you could put your name here if you wanted to. We're going to ask, uh, we're just going to greet the model saying, hi, grandma, and then give me a suggestion on what to eat for lunch. And then we're going to follow that up with what is the recipe for that. So in between each of these queries, we're going to have some responses from the model. And you can see whenever we run the program, how we actually get to have a back and forth conversation where the model actually remembers the previous thing that we told it for context. It has a history of the conversation and it's able to respond accordingly. So let's see how we're doing that. Down here on line 13, we have our messages list. Nothing new here except for instead of hard coding a user role object right after our system role object, we're going to do that dynamically inside of a while loop, which comes next. But let's take a look at the system role object that we have inside of the list. Of course, the system role object always needs to happen first before everything else one time. And then after that, we're just going to have a back and forth between user role and assistant role. User role being what we input and then assistant role being what the model sends back to us as a response to our request to the API. So the system role is the same as what we did in the previous video where the content is set to you are a sweet old helpful grandma. So we're going to be communicating with grandma in this program and we have an infinite loop here. So while true. And then we're going to gather the user text input using the input method in Python, where the argument that we pass in here is just a string of Ian colon space. And that's just prompting us, the user, whoever's running the program, hey, this is the part where you enter in the input for, in this case, Ian. Once we get that assigned to the variable, then we're going to take it and we're going to inject it into this dictionary here, which is the user role object. We're going to pass that into messages.append. So it'll take the user role object with the dynamic content that we just got from that input on the previous line, and it'll append it to the end of our messages list. So like I said previously, we had it hard-coded, system role message, and then after that, the user role message. We're doing that now, except the user role message is getting appended dynamically. And that's important because it happens inside of the while loop. Now, as we continue to have this continuous conversation, with our model, we can add new dynamic input from us, the user. And additionally, later on, we're also going to include the responses from the model. So let's take a look at what's next here. Here is the code that should not be new to you. It's the same thing that we used in the previous two videos where we're actually making the request to the OpenAI chat completion API. So we're creating a new chat completion object and we're passing in the arguments of the model set to GPT 3.5 Turbo the messages set to the current state of our messages list, the temperature, we're keeping it low around 0 0.5. So not a lot of creativity uh, going on there. And then the max tokens, we like to have it around 1024 for this use case, but feel free to play around with it for whatever you're building. So we get that response from the API and then we can traverse into that object. You've seen the object in our logs from the previous videos, but essentially it has information about the chat completion when it was created the various choices available to you. In this case, there's always one choice unless you tell it to have more, which we're not. And we're going to go into that first choice, get access to that message object, and then pull the content string out of it. That content string is going to be the textual response from our assistant role. So from the API, we're going to assign that to the granny underscore response variable. And then we're going to print that. We're printing it so that we can keep track of the conversation in the console and see what the responses are from the API. However, we also need to include that in a assistant role object that we append to the end of our messages list. So I know I said this twice already, but we start out with our system role and then we have our user role. Now we're including our first assistant role object. 
and then we're going to go back and forth user role assistant role for the remainder of however long we keep this program running for and that's how we keep the history of the conversation and keep providing context back to the api for each of our api calls in the future so here we have messages that's our messages list dot append this is just going to put this dictionary onto the end of the messages list the role is set to assistant and then the content is whatever the dynamic value is of that content string that we're getting back from the API response up here. So again, we assign that to granny response, we pass it in here, we append it to the end of messages as an assistant role object, and now the loop is going to run over again and it's going to wait for us to provide further user input here and keep continue to repeat that process. So that's it for the code, really straightforward, really simple. Let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. So we'll go ahead and open up our terminal here. We'll run Python main.py with our virtual environment activated. We're inside of the OpenAI example 03 continuous conversation folder, and we're going to execute that main.py file using Python 3. So when we run that, the first thing it does is it gets down to the user text input Ian, which you see highlighted over here on the left. And it's just prompting me for my input. So I'm going to keep it simple. Hello, grandma. Now we wait for grandma to respond. Short and sweet. Hello, dear. How can I help you today? So that's perfectly in line with what we told the model, how it was going to behave. It's a helpful grandma that checks out. So now I can say, can you please recommend something for lunch? We got to say please because it's our grandma. So we wait for a moment. It comes back. Of course, dear. How about a comforting bowl of homemade chicken noodle soup? It's nourishing and delicious. Or if you prefer something lighter, a fresh salad with grilled chicken and mixed greens would be lovely. What do you think? So this is nice. It's actually giving us options. So let's go with the chicken noodle soup. So I'll say I like the chicken noodle soup. Can you please provide a recipe for that? So let's see if it can give us a recipe with the number of response tokens we've limited to in our max tokens. So the recipe might take a second to come back. It's probably the, the largest response thus far. And sure enough, there it is. So if we take a look, grandma comes back with absolutely. Here's a simple recipe for homemade chicken noodle soup. It gives us all the ingredients nice and organized in an unordered list, then the instructions in an order list, every single step that we need to do to create a delicious bowl of soup. And at the very end, a message, there you go, dear. I hope you enjoy making and eating this comforting chicken noodle soup. Let me know if you need any more help. So because we're inside of a infinite loop, when we finally decide that we want to exit out of here, we just control C, keyboard interrupt, and that'll stop the program from running. And that's it for having a continuous conversation with your GPT model inside of the chat completion API. Thanks a lot, and we'll catch you all in the next video.